It's been something that I'll never forget. It's, we never thought it would be this much, this big, this long. Looking back to March 1st when the pandemic began, uh, we immediately set up a, a uh, seven day per week phone bank and to date that phone bank has taken just over 113,000 calls from Oklahomans. Uh, from a testing perspective, our health system has tested over 110,000 uh, patients for COVID-19 and to date we've given just over 34,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. Planning really drives what we do. We try to cut out randomness or casualness and so going back to uh, when the pandemic first uh, started even in China uh, we began preparing and that really carried us through from all of the testing and preparedness phase up through the summertime as we were getting ready to um, better understand the vaccine process. True to our culture, we wanted to make sure that we were prepared for any contingency. So, um, from a Warren Clinic perspective, the outpatient offices began to prepare with PPE, protective, personal protective equipment, um, on how to deal with patients that may present that are symptomatic and how to isolate those patients safely and get them the care that they need. Simultaneously to that, um, all of the inpatient hospital administration and personnel were working on ER per, uh, policy and protocol um, as well as how to take care of those patients. We quickly tried to identify a place that allowed a drive-through testing as well as an isolated area for further evaluations if, if patients were, were sicker. Command Center, this is Cheryl. I still remember when the number was eight and we were like, all right. You know, great. And then it just went up and up and up and up. One of our nicknames for the command center is the situation room. So we take care of whatever situation comes up. I mean, and, and so as the different units or departments have come in contact with COVID, um, there's a whole new set of questions. The ins and out of patients that are coming and patients that are going, um, and how many, how fast, and like I said, the right place, the right time, the first time is our goal. The whole picture is important. In the fall, we began with flu clinics and trying to keep our patients safe and a convenient way to continue to get the flu, we'll stay out of the hospital and, and keep room for COVID patients. We began a drive-through pro process with the flu vaccine in uh, early August as we built drive-through huts here at the Warren Clinic Tower. So after flu season ended in uh, mid-November, we sat back and realized that a few modifications, mainly central heating uh, and air, needed to be involved to protect our staff so that they could safely prepare the vaccines and also administer them in a sustainable way throughout the winter. I was one of the first ones to receive the vaccine and that was a special meaning to me and my staff, who we need to give lots of kudos to, have taken care of these patients since March 22nd when we opened. We were the first COVID unit to open. We've seen lots of um, horrible, you know, things that this disease has done to people. I work on Fort Tower, and that's the ICU and step-down ICU for COVID patients. So. We see the sickest of the sick patients that have COVID. I just got the COVID vaccine, so that's super exciting. St. Francis also was the first health system to be able to administer COVID vaccines. So in the very early days, we partnered with the health department and began vaccinating frontline workers, uh, emergency uh, personnel and first responders, along with physicians, both within St. Francis Health System and at other facilities in the county. I got the call in the morning from my manager and she asked if I would be willing to go down and get the COVID vaccine today. And I said, yeah, I wanted to get it done as soon as possible. I think it's super exciting to be part of history and you know, being the first people that got the vaccine and got things changing. That's probably one of the best days of my life towards um, basically towards a new beginning, hopefully for all of us. I think as the pandemic progresses, there has sort of been a shift from anxiety to hope as more people are available for the vaccine. Today, we are working with the state as we move into phase two to vaccinate teachers, vaccinate those over 65, or vaccinate those with comorbidities. In early February, when we began seeing the weather forecast of the polar vortex, and we found somewhere close uh, to the current location where patients could park in a covered parking and go indoor for their vaccine. So uh, proudly, we never had to slow down or stop our COVID vaccine operations. 
we are fully predicting and uh, preparing to continue to give vaccines at all of our vaccine sites through the fall and likely next spring. It, it was such a welcome news to see that for, for the first time we vaccinated more people in one day than those that we tested. I think that just continues to build upon uh, the hope and the energy of you know really coming together and pulling through the winter and the hard times as, as we see some light at the end of the tunnel with decreasing COVID inpatient admissions and decreasing COVID positive numbers and increased vaccine numbers.